uh, joined by Eric Ibarra, William Albrecht, and very highly esteemed professor and uh, father, Richard Price, who is professor emeritus of the History of Christianity, Haythrop College, and honorary research fellow, Royal Holloway University of London. His many previous publications include the Acts of the Council of Constantinople, 553, the Acts of Lateran Synod of 649, the Acts of the Second Council of Constantinople, the Council of Ephesus of 431, and the Canons of Quintessext Council, among other publications. As I said, highly esteemed professor, and we are honored to have him on. Professor Richard Price, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Father Price, I just have one question. Uh, what role, if any, did papal infallibility and papal supremacy play at Chalcedon? Well, <laughs> the Easterners didn't believe in it. Uh, they recognized the Pope was the, the, you know, the senior bishop in the church. He must be listened to with respect. So they, they did believe in uh, whether a possible have good relations with Rome and cooperating with Rome. Uh, but of course, this didn't mean that they thought the, the Roman uh, had any notion of papal infallibility. Why was it important for Byzantium that Rome accepted the decrees of councils. Now, it wasn't, I think, because they thought that to be a proper ecumenical decree, it must be accepted by the Pope. Otherwise, its status is dubious. I don't think they thought that. Now, I have a question here from Elijah Yassi. He asks, why did the bishops in Chalcedon feel they needed to judge Theodoret if Leo had already reinstated him? Well, um, they didn't. Re they didn't recognize Roman jurisdiction in the eastern provinces. So uh, Leo's um, reinstating for them was not decisive. A decision has to be made in the east. Um, um, There's one here from <clears throat> Elijah Yassi. Uh, hmm. Theodoret, Eusebius, and Flavian appealed to Rome, expecting that Rome could successfully intervene in their situations. Could that be an instance where the East recognized some sort of jurisdiction of Rome in the East? Therefore, couldn't Chalcedon's reinstatement of Theodoret be one of confirming rather than establishing anew? But uh, in that session, when they... Uh, decided to reinstate uh, Theodoret, they do not refer to the papal decision as having forced their hand. In fact, I can't remember them actually referring to it. Now, naturally, Theodoret, uh, he appeals to Rome, not because Constantinople uh, will accept Roman jurisdiction, but rather that they know he recognizes that, particularly with the new emperor, Constantinople is very keen to restore good relations with Rome. Father Price, I really want to thank you so much for coming on. That's going to be it for the chat questions. This has been fascinating.